I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. The Treehouse Show is brought to you by Treehouse. For a free month of Treehouse, check out teamtreehouse.com slash show. In this episode, we'll be going over parallax scrolling, style sheets, finding unused CSS, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a blog post on parallax scrolling done right. Now, we've probably all seen the parallax scrolling effect, and actually we can check out a demo to see what parallax scrolling is. You can see as I'm scrolling down the page, there are animations where the background is a little bit out of sync and just having some really nice effects while we're scrolling down the page. What is happening? We wow. are in the future, Nick. That's what's happening. The future is right now. Tomorrow on, is today. On this web page. Look at that. See all that? So this can actually be a pretty tough effect to um, do performantly in your code. And this blog post goes over a bunch of different ways and things you should keep in mind while creating a parallax effect. So here are some do's. Only use properties that are cheap for browsers to animate. He is talking about using translate 3D, scale, rotation, and opacity. This is a good tip. Anything else, and you're probably not going to be running all of these animations at 60 FPS. That's frames per second. Yes, it is, Nick. I, I just thought that was the name of it. I didn't realize it meant something. Oh, it does. Wow. My mind is blown. I can't even do the rest of this. No, I'm just kidding. Next up, the, uh, the next tip is use window.requestAnimationFrame, which tells the browser that stuff is going to need to be animated before the next repaint is done. Uh, I'm not going to go over all of the different techniques that he goes through in this article, but there are some do's and some don'ts, which are just a bunch of great tips if you are trying to implement parallax scrolling on your pages. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is Picture Fill. This is a JavaScript polyfill from the Responsive Images Community Group. Oh, yeah, the RICG. Exactly. Of course, it can be very difficult to create responsive images properly because you have to load in a couple of different image assets, and that can be somewhat expensive because the browser can't render something it doesn't know about. So if you use media queries, you have to actually load in all the different images that you might need, which is bad because that uses up a lot of bandwidth. So much work. The picture fill polyfill is basically filling in for an element that doesn't quite exist yet, but it's basically an evolution of the image element where it has the attributes source set and the sizes attribute. So the sizes attribute it's a little bit complex to explain here, but basically it's sort of a replacement for using media queries to control your images. And then the source set defines which images should be displayed at different widths. So let's look at the standalone demo, and I'll come out of full screen here. And right here we have a picture of a couple of soldiers greeting the president, and if we resize the browser, the image gets smaller. But not only does it get smaller, the image is actually being cropped in closer to the important part of the picture. Because at small sizes, if you just resized the larger image, it would be pretty difficult to see. So you can actually have different images that are cropped differently and not just resized, which is a pretty big advantage here. This is also great for high resolution displays. Anyway, you can check out this JavaScript polyfill and you can start using it in browsers today, even if they don't support these new attributes. Today is tomorrow. It is. Tomorrow is already here. Next up, we have a project called Style Stats. This is a really interesting site that you can drop a URL into. It will go out and grab the style sheets and give you some really interesting statistics about the page. Now, the example that I gave it was the Bootstrap Framework website. It contains two style sheets and comes in at a 117K. 
Over on the right here, there is a nice listing of all the different colors that are used in the website along with their corresponding hex values. Now, this can be good if you are creating a style guide, which is something that we've mentioned on previous uh, episodes of the Treehouse Show, which you should be completely familiar with uh, by this point. Um, so there's also some really nice uh, ideas here, most identifiable selector, and just uh, some nice information about this site. Totally unique font sizes, 26 font sizes on getbootstrap.com. That is a lot of font sizes. That is. I think, I don't actually know if that's a lot comparatively. It, it could be a low number, it could be a high number. I don't know, but I do have the number. Anyway, go ahead and plug your site in here and get the statistics. If you want to, you can also check out the source code to the document if you would like to check it out on GitHub and just kind of learn about how they implemented this feature. And you can find a link to that in our show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse. Also, check out teamtreehouse.com slash show for a 30-day free trial of Treehouse. Next up is this really cool post called Why and How to Avoid hamburger menus. Well, I first, would not want to avoid hamburger menus. I love hamburgers. I know. They're so delicious. I'm well, hungry right now. These hamburger, For a hamburger. These hamburger menus are these little three-line menus that, they're delicious. that you've probably spotted in various web apps. Facebook is a pretty good example. The iPhone app for Facebook has this little three-line menu. And when you tap it, you get something that looks like this. So you open up this little side menu that has a bunch of stuff. And the three lines here are supposed to be iconography that represent different menu items that you can select. So it kind of looks like a hamburger with the two buns and the patty, and that's where the term hamburger menu comes from. However, there's a couple of problems with the hamburger menu. They're saying it has lower discoverability, it's less efficient, it clashes with platform navigation patterns, and it's not glanceable. It's lower discoverability because you basically can't find stuff that is out of sight. I mean, you can find it, but it's a lot more difficult. And it's less efficient because it's another tap or click to get to this menu when really you could just be presenting these things all at once. I would like to have a hamburger presented to me. Another problem is that it clashes with platform navigation patterns. So, in other words, there's all these nice design patterns that are already implemented in iOS and Android and other mobile platforms, such as the back button or the share button and so on, and these search bars. However, the hamburger menu never really had a place there, and it was never designed to be there. So we're sort of tacking this on as an additional design pattern when that's not how the entire design was conceived together. So it doesn't totally make sense. I would like to tack on an order of fries to the hamburger. So what should you do instead of using the hamburger menu? Well, Hot dog menu. One option is to use a tab bar, uh, like the one you see here. So you could have this tab bar down at the bottom of the screen, and you can select different, uh, different views rather than going to the hamburger menu. And if I scroll down here, uh, there it is. It says another solution is to review your information architecture. So a way to get around this is to actually just Think about how you're organizing content in an app and basically redo it rather than relying on that menu. Anyway, it's a really cool post. There's a lot more in depth here that we did not get into, so definitely be sure to check that out. Next up, we have a blog post by David Walsh on finding unused CSS. This project is called UnCSS or UnCSS. Now, the purpose of this project is it goes to your website and then looks at all of the different styles on the page. And, and then any CSS that's unused, it allows you to resell on Craigslist. <laughs> yes, that is the perfect, uh, perfect idea. And then it, you get a lot of uh, really lowball offers from HTML tags when that happens. Mm -hmm. So it looks at all the CSS on your page, which can, which can really accumulate as a site grows. You know, maybe you're just not using certain selectors or certain styles. And this will tell you what those are um, and give you some nice output. And you can go 
um, take care of that or you know do something else maybe just leave it let it let it accumulate whatever as long as you know it's there you can decide what to do with it you can also interact with this programmatically if you're using node.js or you can just use the command and parse the output yourself so that's it cool uh, cool project uncss or uns check it out very nice stuff well next up is this grunt task called grunt email design workflow and like I said it is a grunt task that allows you to compile your SCSS to, to CSS it builds email templates and then it inlines all of your CSS isn't that a bad idea Nick in this case it's exactly what you want because when you're designing email templates a lot of kind of older stuff that you had to do for older browsers like tables and inline CSS definitely apply here because a lot of email clients don't have the same rendering capabilities as modern browsers so you have to do a lot of ugly stuff and that can be pretty difficult boy I set it up you knocked him down that was beautiful mm. so it inlines your CSS and then it uploads any images to a, C a CDN content delivery network thank you Jason and it sends you a test email to your inbox well how does it do all that it basically strings together a couple of different tools including node grunt and ruby actually those are the things you have to install the tools it strings together are premailer which inlines the css mailgun which sends an email so this is a service that you can sign up for and it's an email service for developers it's as wonderful actually mailgun uh, wonderful service it's great uh, they're not sponsoring the show by the way we should get that out of the way we just kind of happen to ramble on to this mailgun's great for outbound delivery because ensuring your emails actually make it to who they're going to make it to can be uh, quite an issue and also lets you receive emails into your app so this makes it really easy to automate that process and just put it right into your build it also uses litmus which is a service that allows you to test the email across clients browsers and devices and then you can use Rackspace Cloud as your CDN so it strings all of these tools together and just automates the whole process of sending out these emails which can be a real pain if you're building uh, anything more than a trivial web app now if you've never heard of grunt before if you're totally new to this you should definitely check out this post from Chris Coyer it's linked right here and it's called grunt for people who think things like grunt are weird and hard <laughs> and I was one of those people until I read this post and it's really pretty great you should definitely check that out if you're new it will totally automate a lot of your front-end development yeah you know for a lot of front-end stuff we have uh, these great tools to work with it when you're making um, pages for browsers or you know mobile browsers desktop browsers but a lot of that falls apart with email so it's nice to be able to use some of the tools that you are used to definitely well that's all we have time for this week I am at Nick RP on Twitter and I am at Jay Cypher for more information on anything we talked about check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse also sign up for a 30-day free trial of treehouse at teamtreehouse.com slash show and of course if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design web development, mobile business, and so much more, be sure to use that link to sign up. It's teamtreehouse.com slash show. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.